Okay guys, um, this is another uh, shorter episode this time, uh, this should be episode 6. My last episode was quite lengthy, so I, I've cut it into two uh, parts, 5A and 5B, so um, you maybe already looked at that, or well you won't have yet because I haven't uploaded it but by the time you watch this episode you might have already uh, up, uh, looked at it. So yeah it's only been a couple of days since I recorded episode 5a and 5b um, and I mentioned at the time that I was going to strip the pulleys and um, the shafts and the, the supporting brackets out and uh, I wasn't quite sure how to do that uh, because uh, the, the pulley that would um, fit up here was supposedly keyed onto the shaft and I, uh, I looked at the manual and that's indeed what the diagrams indicated. Now I've had a little re revelation uh, since I uh, stripped this um, parts out the, the shaft isn't that exact isn't actually keyed um, and is in fact I um, I believe a homemade shaft now this is the shaft here um, this end wh which um, my finger is pointing to is in fact where the, the pulley mounts and there's as you can see two flat spots uh, machined out of the shaft. Now that is for uh, grub screws to tighten up upon. Uh, this is the sha the end that would um, you know the, the end where the, the behind the chuck basically and again you've got another two flats machined out for grub screws for our collar which uh, is located on the outside of the the bracket. I've got the bracket here in fact. Uh, so here's the bracket. The shaft is basically in that orientation and um, there would be a retaining collar on here which I've basically got. Uh, it's one of those ones there. The pulleys then mount here in the middle and uh, the diagram says that the the um, grub screws would be on the middle pulley. You know, there being three pulleys in total, and that was incorrect. It was actually on the innermost um, pulley with the smallest diameter. So, having realised that that is possibly a a homemade part, or maybe a a slightly older model or a newer model than the one described in the manual I have had another look at the bearings and this is the, the bearings in here for the, the shaft to locate in and to my mind that's a little bit narrow so I think that somebody has put a bigger shaft in there machined it out for whatever reason I don't know but that is the status of the shaft and the bracket so that needs to be, well, that doesn't need to be uh, replaced actually because it is very good fit, very professionally done and um, I'm going to leave it as it is because it works perfectly. Um, <coughs> the mounting plate on the back was a bit of a, a chore to get removed. Uh, as you can see here, it's... Um, absolutely messed up with crud and you can see the state of the paint there you know they, they've just slapped it on with a brush you know they've, they've not taken any care over what they painted or how it was painted they've got me bits missing which leads me to believe they just painted it to make it look a little bit fresher before they flogged it either to myself or the paint looks reasonably old because there is sign of you know the machine have 
the machine being used since it was painted this green colour. You know, there is a lot of dirt on the green, so it's been painted for a wee while, but it's never been done properly. A uh, wee bit of damage there to that uh, bar, as you can see it's significantly bent, that will hardly get taken out and either replaced or repaired in some respect. Now what surprised me about this however, there's no bushes in these um, brackets or lugs off the, 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 the mounting plate. Um, but then again I don't suppose it really needs to be because these uh, shafts don't see a lot of use. You know, they're, they're, they don't rotate uh, you know, in so much as they're not continually rotating. Uh, they're basically there for adjustment or for support, so they're not actually revolving constantly, so yeah, bushes aren't necessary. However, having said that, they are shafts, and they were in a hellish state. Uh, they were all rusted up, I haven't actually gotten around to cleaning them properly yet. I gave this one a, quite, a quick rub with some uh, wire wool. So that's a little bit cleaner. Uh, another one here. Uh, again, I gave this one a scrape just to try and get it out. Uh, you can see, you know, the surface finish on at the ends, which is actually within the, the the brackets lugs, are okay. But the rest of the shaft was quite rusted up, uh, and was you know required a quite a good um, whack with a hammer to get out. Um, a good solid tap, really more than a whack, because I didn't want to break the the lugs or the mounting plate. So I just tapped it out with a, a punch and a hammer, and they came out no too bad. You know, I, I, I gave them a couple of days to soak in in a WD-40, just to get you know in about all the workings and gubbins, and hopefully loosen it up a little bit. And even then it was really tight so but they're out now and I can get at them, clean them up, grease them and get it all back together once it's all been scraped and painted. So yeah, um we now have um the motor, the supporting plate has also been removed and it's just that's the bolts and nuts um for that uh, part. And you can see in here at the back that um well, I don't know if you can actually, I'll just try and get a little bit more light on there for you. Um, it is really dirty. It's never been cleaned in I don't know how long. Right, let's see if that's any better. That's a little bit better. So, yeah, you've got, that's the back of the, the lathe. Uh, here, there's a hole, and there is another one up there, and indeed another one over here. Those are the three bolts that um, the back plate mount on. Uh, they came out not too bad actually. Um, so you can see all the dirt that's fallen in the back here, so it's just really, really black. I don't know when the last time this lathe was cleaned. She's just minging. So, um, that was what I was at this afternoon. I haven't done any other significant work to the lathe since last time I, um, I spoke with you. Um, I took yesterday off and I didn't do anything uh, to the lathe yesterday. I had other things on. So, um, yeah. Uh, I think I should just call it quits at that now because that's probably been five or ten minutes already. And uh, my last double episode was nearly a gig in size, and uh, so I've split it as I said in, into two. But even then, you're looking at four or five hundred megs, so I have to try and find a video editing software suite that I can use for compression. Uh, and try and get that file size down before I attempt to upload it to uh, YouTube. So yeah, um, that's that'll come in the next week or so hopefully. And um, 
I'll get as many more updates to you as I can as and when I've got time and actual um, progress to show you. Um, there was something I was going to mention. What was it? Yeah, these um, uh, locating collars. Um, they're not locating collars, but they're like uh, they they get they're keyed, not keyed. Um, they're they're held in place on the shafts by grub screws. And this one here, you can see, has a uh, two uh, drilled and tapped holes for that purpose. And um, indeed, all of them have either one or two holes in them for such a purpose. Uh, these other ones in here are for are for the gears, and they've got keys in them. Now, they're effect they're effective enough. You know, the, the, the shaft doesn't have any force on it to try and uh, move it in a lateral direction, you know, left or right. It's all, all the shafts at the back of the lathe are purely there for support, basically. Um, so there's very little need for them to have any sort of robust system in place to prevent the shaft from moving left and right. So these, these suffice. Um, they're not a very um, elegant method, I don't think. Uh, if I put my mind to it, I could probably come up with something better than that. But they're simple, they're cheap and easily to produce, so that's probably why they've gone ahead with that. Um, <coughs> one of my issues when I was stripping um, the, the parts at the back here was the fact that it would have been easier for me just to have removed the whole supporting bracket with the pulley and everything attached in the one go but I couldn't now the reason being I'll um, if I can show you here the reason being the mounting plate for the the motor is secured in that sort of fashion on the back of this mounting bracket and then that plate I'll not sit it in just case I drop it that plate then is retained by a shaft, not this shaft, but by a shaft going all the way through. Now you can see the shaft, once it's in place, is directly in front of this hole, which is one of the main securing bolts for the whole assembly. So there's no way to take that bolt out without first stripping everyone else. It might have been something to do with the casting process, I don't know. Um, it might have been easier to, to do it that way or there's maybe been not enough um, clearance in another respect to the the lathe body possibly but to my mind that bottom hole could easily have been moved up a little bit might not have enough levers in um, leverage or possibly moved down maybe um, Either way, it would have been better when, if they could have um, designed it so that this bolt or the shaft wasn't in the way of the bolt, um, because then it would have been much easier to strip. As you can see, this is uh, all required, right quite good clean, and uh, that's my job for this evening, getting all this uh, scrubbed up, and indeed probably for the next few afternoons. So yeah, uh, I'm blethering on again. Uh, okay folks, I... Thanks for watching and um, see you soon. Bye.